What's up guys, my name is Andre, or Chokenator if you know me for my stream. Um, so I'm going to do a Krita animation tutorial. A lot of people have been asking me to do this because I do my animation in Krita, and they've been wanting to know, or they've been wanting a video uh, teaching people how to do it. Um, and obviously the first step, if we're just going to get right into it here, is to open up Krita web page. It's krita.org slash en. Just go to krita.org and it should take you to the English site. Um, and you can see right here, get Krita now. But before we do that, let's read this. Krita is a free and open source painting program. It is made by artists that want to see affordable art tools for everyone. And by affordable, they mean literally free, which is really awesome. Um, so let's click get Krita now. And depending on what version you need, Windows, 64-bit, 32-bit, if you have Linux or Mac, um, they have those versions too. You can even download the source code directly if you're into programming and you want to see what the program in Krita looks like. But anyway, I have a Windows, um, and it looks like they have tablet support for Wacom, Huion, Surface Pro, Yi Nova. I've never heard of Yi Nova. That's interesting. Um, but anyways, I got the Windows version here, and I've already downloaded it. So this is what Krita looks like, right? So you can see here on the left, you have all your basic uh, painting tools, your brush, your lines, your crop tools, marquees, uh, move tools. And on the right here, you have your color picker and your layers. In another tab, they have your brush presets. Um, and you can, you know, change these around, change your dockers and stuff. Um, but so what, what's really special about Krita is that up here, this sort of small um, button, is a drop list. Uh, for some reason, you can't open that drop list unless you have a file. So I'm going to make a new file. And right now, resolution, I have 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. Uh, 720p, which is, a, you know, for a basic animation, that's a great resolution. So let's make a new file. And now I can click this button up here. And there is an animation workspace. Right now I'm on the default workspace, but if you click the animation workspace, it changes. And down here on the bottom left, all the animation controls come up. And this is really awesome. So right now I'm, I have a white background layer. Let me make a new layer with this button, this plus sign here. Um, and now, as you can see, if I take off this white layer, you can see that it's transparent. I could draw some black lines here and you can see that it's transparent. Um, so let me bring that back. And now I'm on layer two. Uh, and what I'm going to do, what I'm going to animate for you is a bouncing ball, a really basic animation exercise. I might not even do it that well, but that's what we're going to show you today. I just want to show you how fast and intuitive this program is. Um, so right now I'm going to go to this button here. Uh, we have new frame, and that's a very basic button you want to use um, into animation. And what it does is you can see if, it's, if I scroll through the frames here, on frame zero, I've created a keyframe, which turns blue. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bouncing ball or just a ball uh, ready to bounce, right? There's a ball. And um, if I scroll through my frames, you can see that the, the ball persists. And if I hit play, the ball's just gonna stay there because that's all I have. So all, these, uh, so all these subsequent frames, they preserve the ball. So what I can do now, um, let me try drawing a ball on frame 14. Let's say, so I'm gonna click new frame again and the ball disappeared. And normally in an animation program, you want onion skin. So this sort of onion looking button, uh, normally you think, okay, I'll click that button, the onion skins will show, but it actually tells you what the onion skins are gonna look like. The real onion skin button, which is kind of counterintuitive, is up here by the layers. It's this light bulb button here. If I click that, it turns on. And now I can see the ball in red. That's where my previous frame is. Um, so if I go to frame 14 here and I'm gonna draw the ball all the way flat on the ground, as if it's already hit the ground, right? And then I'm gonna draw on frame 28. That's two, 14 times two is 28. On frame 28, I'm gonna make another new lay, uh, another new frame, excuse me, and draw the ball all the way back up here. So if I hit playback, you can see, I can set my start and end frames here. So let's go to frame 30. Starting on frame zero, ending on frame 30. If you guys can see, it's kind of small. I hope you can see that. I'm gonna press play. And now you can see the ball kind of bouncing up and down. And I'm going to do some uh, keyframes here, just right in between on frame eight or frame seven. I'll do, I'll go frame eight, frame six. Let's do frame six. I'll, I'm going to animate on the even numbers here. I'm going to hit new frame and let's draw, as you can see, the previous and the previous and future keyframes are red and green. Um, so I'm going to draw a ball sort of stretching on the way down here. And then on frame uh, 20, I want to be on the even numbers let's draw the ball you know moving back up so now I've 
this one's on the way up and now I've animated this ball moving down and then bouncing back up so if I press play you can see it's bouncing so it's pretty easy right uh, now I can do all the in-between stuff so let me erase these arrows here and I want to animate in all the even numbers so let's go frame 2 new frame let's tr try and draw the ball it's kind of coming down and stretching a little bit frame 4 another new frame kind of stretching down Another new frame, kind of stretching down all the way. Another one here. And maybe on frame 12, the ball starts to hit the ground here. And it starts to flatten on frame 14, which I drew earlier. And then 16, make a new frame. Don't never, don't forget to hit new frame. You really need that. That's important or else you're just going to be drawing more lines on top of the previous frame. Um, frame 18, let's draw the ball coming up. Oops, new frame there. Okay, ball coming up. Frame 22, ball's coming up that way. And frame 24, all the way, almost all the way up. And then frame 26, it's kind of coming back to normal and unstretching. So let's see how that looks. So it's not perfect, obviously. <laughs> it looks kind of funny, um, but obviously you can uh, change the positions of the balls on each frame. So if I wanted to make this ball come a little closer here, I could just transform it, you know. Move it, move it up. Maybe that, maybe that'll look a little more natural. Let me press play here. Has to regenerate. Yeah, that's a little better, right? So you can just make adjustments on your frames, on your keyframes here, and it's pretty simple. Um, and you could, you know, scroll your frames with these buttons. Uh, next frame, next keyframe. These are uh, the ways to scroll through. Um, but what's really cool too, uh, to make things even easier for you, is you can go here into the settings, configure Krita. And here you can set your keyboard shortcuts, and it, it has all these different categories of shortcuts. Uh, right, here, right here at the top is your animation, so let's expand that drop list. And as you can see here, I've already set a lot of my uh, shortcuts. Uh, new frame, next frame, next keyframe, playback, previous, previous keyframe, toggle onion skin. All these are really useful for animation. So if you just set your shortcuts here to whatever button you want, uh, maybe you can even copy my setup here, A, J, G, Enter, H, and F. R for copy, um, O for toggle onion skin. You could uh, definitely make things really fast for you, make the process really fast for you. So um, obviously you just have to play around with all these buttons. You're gonna make mistakes. Um, another thing I wanna show you is that if you make a new layer, layer three here, and I'm gonna go to frame zero and make a new frame. Every layer has its own individual set of frames. So if I draw another ball here on frame third, on, on layer three, and I draw another ball. Let's say let's well, let's do the same thing. Let's draw a bouncing ball on uh, frame three. Let's make a new frame here. I mean on layer three. Excuse me. Another bouncing ball on frame twenty eight. Same way I started the other one. I'll make a new frame there. And it even has its own set of onion skins. So I just turn this light bulb on. Ooh, it looks like I. <laughs> I misplaced the ball there. So if I scroll through my frames, I actually got to move this ball. That's why it helps to have onion skins, guys. I'm going to move this ball that way. So if I play this back, as you can see, layer three has its own set of frames. So you can animate um, layers on top of layers. And just to demonstrate what that might look like, I have a, a game that I'm animating. So I have some sprites here. Uh, I, I, it would, I would be hard pressed to call them sprites. They're actually pretty big. Um, I have some drawings here, some animated drawings of this character uh, in a in a fighting pose, right? So if I scroll through these frames here, as you can see, she has this idle pose here, and she has a, a jumping pose, and I have all these other frames of different actions. Um, but let me show you my uh, my idle pose and my jumping animation, right? So up to frame ninety six, I think. So this is what it looks like, and what I have here is uh, one layer of lines, a layer of colors. A layer for shadows and a layer for highlights and as you can see later on at the end of this jump animation i haven't quite fully colored it yet i haven't even cleaned up the lines um but this is the type of animation quality you can get in krita you can even create a background uh you have everything you need for great animation um you have all the tools um which is really really wonderful about this program and i've been using it for maybe a few months um and that's pretty much the end of this video i want you guys to get in there and really play around with it um I know there's going to be uh, mistakes, so you guys can ask me questions in the comments if you make some mistakes in um, 
you need some help uh, figuring out how that works. Um, I'm also going to put the uh, some links in the comments, uh, the download for Krita, the Krita homepage. Um, I also have a Google Doc uh, with a tutorial in it. And also my Twitch channel if you want to see me doing some animation and illustration. Um, I hope that helped you guys and uh, I'm going to make more videos of these in the future um, just to show you some animation techniques. Um, I love you all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later with the next video. Peace.